morning. It's about eight o'clock now. I'm gonna get up now, I'm gonna get everything packed away and get going. Um, what else was I gonna say? Oh, battery, yeah. Because it was really cold last night, all of the power got sucked out of everything. So my power bank's dead. My phone is on about just over 40%. So I'm gonna be reliant on the 40% that's on the phone. And I'm gonna assume that that's gonna run down faster than expected. And just whatever I can charge up when I stop in cafes slash pubs slash whatever I stop in today. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to catch on video today. I'll try, and, I'll try and do bits and pieces and I'm not too worried about saving battery for the map app because the signposts have been great. So I've, I've not really needed it that much, but obviously I'll need it when I'm planning distances and the rest of the route. So yeah, I'm going to get up and then um, get packed away and then we'll make a move. Oh. So that's the tower that we're headed for there. It's nice when, you, when you've got a little bit of shelter from the wind. Uh, it's still a bit chilly though. Uh, yeah, I think when I get to the tower, I'll probably leave my layers on while I have some food and drink. It's really popular, people coming back already. There were about, by the time I set off with new arrivals, there were about 10 cars in that car park, so it's obviously really popular with people doing an early morning, early morning walk. It's nice walk, walk in the morning, actually. So, so flat way up here, so if you're coming through this way and you wanted to push on the camp up here, you could definitely do so. That's what it originally looked like. I guess this is the bit that's left, the base. Where well, there was a tower up there. Yeah, highest point on the Cluidian range, 554 meters. Yeah, this side's nice and sheltered from the wind. It's a very Welsh themed trip. think for a second, and I don't know, as I think I mean worry for a second, that I was going to have to go right up over that hill and over the top, but I think the path actually is that one that goes round there. It is still, I've got a little bit of down and then a little bit of up, but then it goes right down on the other side of that hill to pretty much the lowest point you can get to and so but it goes that's it. I've had a look where there's like pubs and cafes and refreshments and whatnot, and the next one is at, that, at the low point on the far side of that. I don't know if it's that hill or the next one, um, and it's about four and a half miles from here, maybe like an hour and a half. Um, 12 31 o'clock, something like that, which is bang on time for me to stop and get some lunch there. Just looking at all the, uh, the heather here, and obviously all the pack going past as well. The colours are really nice, kind of pinks and purples, and these light brown colours. Is flowering as well here, uh, which is it's actually quite a quite an attractive plant when it's in flower. There's a little yellow flowers on it. Obviously, it's a bit spiky when it comes to it. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna press on down here, take my jacket off, and then start on the other side. There we go uphill now. So the last hill I went up and over was Moral Arthur, Arthur's Mount. It's a site of an Iron Age. Hill Fort, um, and that was the, the path we went around straight up to the top, was leading up to the top of that hill. That I said, I hope we don't have to go up, and we didn't, we kind of went round it. Um, I don't think there was a great deal to see up there. And then this is another similar sized hill on the up this side, but then on the other side of it, it goes down for about three or four times the distance. And I think where I'm hoping to stop for lunch is at the bottom of that big long downhill. So 10 more minutes of climbing, 15 maybe, and then down, 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 and then a nice break. That's the plan at any rate. Let's see if the stopping point is, is still there and is still open and is open today. But I mean, it's a Sunday, it should be. 
I was just wondering when we get to the top of this hill and then is a mix of like, footpaths and uh, like, trails like this, like you know, this byways, I guess. Quick check on Google Maps. I think the, um, the place right at the bottom that I was hoping to stop at, I think that might be closed, but there's another pub that looks like it's like maybe like five or ten minute walk off trail, maybe ten minutes off trail, just down the little side road. So, um, and that looks like they do pretty good food there. So. Fingers crossed I'll be able to get something because I'm just thinking it's, it's Sunday lunch and if it's the only pub in the area it might be kind of rammed or booked up for food at least. I should be able to get a pint regardless um, and worst case scenario I can get a bit of extra water from them and I can do the last of my oatmeal. Um, I was kind of thinking of saving it for breakfast tomorrow but yeah, if that's my only lunch option then fine. I can, I should be able to get a cup breakfast and some wood tomorrow anyway, which would probably be better. Almost there. That pub did in Auburn Arms was excellent. Um, a Sunday roast, pork and beef, really good, with uh, horseradish sauce and then a sticky toffee pudding with honeycomb ice cream afterwards, which was, oh, in normal times, way too many calories. Yeah, it was fantastic, really good. Back onto the trail now. Just gonna, yeah, she, just gonna walk back through this little village. It's only about 400 meters, 500 meters maybe. Back onto the, the trail, which just followed the road round a little bit past that other pub that was closed. And then let's see where we are time-wise for getting to Prestatin. Uh, I think if we're pushing all the way through, I think it's doable but it's going to be a late arrival. I'm going to wait till I get through town and then um, I'll think through what my plans are. There's our sign, up we go. So it's 3.30 when I left there and according to my hiking app, five hours to get to the end of the trail, which would mean getting to the end of the trail at 8.30. But as we know, the hiking app is not counting enough for all the ups and downs so let's add an hour on for that 9 30 and at least half an hour for stoppages because i'm going to want to sit down this is probably close to an hour but let's say half an hour and be optimistic so i was getting to the end of the trail at 10 it, like realistically it means rolling into a campsite and having my tent up by about 11 in prestatin so basically the end of the night it's not the end of the world because it means I can just kind of, everything will be shut then. This is Sunday at 11, everything will be shut. I can just rock up, put my tent up. The other option is stop, just short press that in, and then get up in the morning, do my oatmeal breakfast thingy, finish, finish my food, and then roll in to press that in, in the morning. And if I, if I do stop shout of there, then it'll only be like a couple of hours short. After a big, Sunday roast and sticky toffee pudding and two pints of beer. I'm a little bit lethargic. Okay, more than a little bit lethargic. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, oop, I think I'm just going to go on and see. My, my worries if I if I aim to get like just like just short press that in, it's going to be too kind of urban. It's going to be a pain in the ass finding someone to kip. Although I don't know, it, it won't be that bad. It won't be that bad. But I think what I'll probably do is treat it like a normal day. Ignore the fact that the end of the trail is, is approaching. Um, when it gets to, say, 5.30, I'll start looking for somewhere. And if I see anywhere that's, like, really nice, then I'll stop. And if I don't, then I'll just keep going until I hit press that. That sounds reasonable to me. I really needed a siesta after that meal. Last half hour has been uh, walking along the road up from that pub, so where I had lunch. So it's nice to be uh, back in nature again. You can probably hear my voice, I'm really tired now. Um, just from that meal, really. It's been really heavy. 
I think I had enough there to fuel me for the rest of the day anyway, so I forgot to ask him to top up a bottle of water before I left. But that's not a not a huge problem. I've got uh, I think I've got about two thirds of a bottle, so just over half a litre. That's a nice fuel with the rays of the sun coming out from between the clouds. One thing to bear in mind now, if we don't go all the way into Prestatin, and probably won't, is we don't want to find somewhere, even if we find somewhere that's otherwise a nice pitch, don't want to find somewhere that's too close to this road. Because um, I don't want that, that's going to be noisy all night, I would imagine. Uh, so, just one other thing to add into the mix when I'm looking for somewhere to pitch up. At least when we're past this, we'll be heading away from it, so we should be getting quieter again. Well, actually, as soon as we've got a, a bank of earth and a few trees in between us and the road, the noise drops off hugely, but still would be annoying at an annoying level to have to um, put up with overnight. Someone's lost a hat. That just uh, is where I just come through from the field I was in. Yeah, just in the corner of this field, it, this bit here is a little bit flatter. Uh, it's sheltered on two sides from the wind rather than one. There's nothing here apart from an ex mushroom. I'm going to pitch here for the night. I'm going to put my tent up now and just let it air out for, I don't know, basically till, till the sun goes down. Yeah, you can see the road from here and hear it a little bit, but it's, it's not loud, it's in the distance. Yeah, I think this will be a good pitch for the night. That's my pitch for the night in the corner of this field. Got a bit of light yet, so I'm going to chill out for a bit. Uh, let the tent air out for 10, 15 minutes. Then get all my stuff fired inside, get all my sleeping system set up. And then with the water I've got left, I'm probably going to make a cup of hot chocolate. And then I'll save the last little bit to, well, I'll brush my teeth. And then I'll save the last little bit just if I want a sip of water through the night or when I get up in the morning. And then tomorrow it should be a nice, easy walk down into Prestatin. It should be, yeah, quite quick to finish off tomorrow. I think three hours maybe of, of easy walking. Hit Prestatin about mid, like mid morning. Um, I'll get a cooked breakfast there. Morning. Right, last day. Uh, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get my stuff packed away. I'm gonna wipe the tent down. It's, uh, it's wet on the outside. So I'm gonna get that wiped down and then put away. I will show you the view from the tent this morning though, because it's quite special. That's really nice to wake up to on the last day. There's my dry patch. Off we go, the last little bit. Hopefully you can see the sea behind us, just getting closer there. And then these are some of the last countryside views we're going to get. There we are, top of that little rise. A few down into Prestatin. Yeah. <laughs> that last farmyard I went through had some extremely friendly dogs in it <laughs> jumping all over my coat and mud now. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, so I have to wait for that to dry and then brush it off. No biggie. See, starting to see signs of civilization as we get into town. We've got Prestatin as the next destination on the sign now as well. We must be getting close. Yep, there's our destination. And then the last little climb up to the top of here, and then it's all downhill for the last, I don't know, whatever, half hour. That's it, almost up. In the outskirts of town, it seems like it's got these little um, brass versions of the, uh, there's a logo on, looks like on all of the lampposts, knocking the route in. I can see the end now, spin you out. There's the background, there's the sea, there's the monument, there's the finish. Job done.